Good afternoon, everyone who, who are watching us on uh, the ASP Facebook page. My name is Mona Magnoveluz, and I'm the National President of the Autism Society Philippines. Welcome to another Q&A session um, on ASP's Ask the Experts. So ito pong sessions natin, the ones that we've had over the last week and last um, and, and uh, um, also the activities that we've had with our children on the autism spectrum are really meant to help our community. No? Kahit po nasa loob tayo ng bahay, kahit po uh, ECQ ang buong Luzon. Importante po that we are engaged at importante rin that we are using this time to uh, to know something new. Di ba? Lahat po tayo dapat palaging nag-aaral. Uh, before we uh, move forward, yung mga nanonood po, kung pwede po pakilagay sa comments natin kung taga saan kayo. Kasi uh, what we learned yesterday is napakarami pong nanonood sa atin from as far as Misamis Oriental, Basilan, Dagupan. Napakasaya po. Papasayahin niyo po kami if you let us know uh, where you are watching us from. So today's session is very special kasi po um, our uh, panelists today has been a partner to the Autism Society Philippines for many, many years. She has helped us on issues uh, such as spe many special education issues as well as transition uh, planning and education. Uh, we were also working together on the ASP Autism Works Program and uh, napakarami po namin um, uh, napagdaanan ni Teacher Landa. So, uh, okay. <laughs> without further ado, hello Teacher Landa. Hello, hello, Tita Mona. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to everyone. Thank you so How much you? for doing this for our community. Teach, uh, I know that uh, matagal na tayo hindi nagkaka nakikita. Please tell us what you're you're up to these days. Well, um, I'm now connected with Maria Montessori Children's um, uh, Children's School Foundation Inc. Uh, I work with them as a special needs coordinator. I'm helping them set up uh, the special needs unit for the school. Um, and I'm now trying to migrate the contents of my old blog to my new website. So that's keeping me busy aside from being a mom to our uh, little uh, warrior, Levi. So that on its own <laughs> takes a lot of time and work. So teach, tell us, um, for those of us who may not know, ano po ba ang difference ng teacher at ng isang special education teacher? Okay. Well, for special education teachers, there's more training involved, particularly in reference to providing more systematic plans or educational plans for students with special needs. No? So, um, when we say students with special needs as diverse as those who are gifted to those who have autism and other developmental conditions, we also have special education teachers for those with sensory concerns like uh, visual impairment or hearing impairment. Um, our main difference talaga from regular teachers is that the curriculum is somehow different and we are equipped with, aside from behavior modification techniques and environmental modification techniques, we're equipped to accommodate, you know, the different needs of a child depending on what their current performance level is and what their needs are. Kasi pag sinabi natin may special needs, even if they all have autism, they all have different unique needs and we need to factor that in. And that's what the expertise of a special education teacher is. And saka in my, in my uh, observation teach, ang mga special education teachers, hindi lang yung, yung pag-aaral, hindi lang yung degree. Napakarami nyo rin patience, sa totoo lang. Hindi ko kaya yung ginagawa ninyo. True, so we'll, we'll uh, get things going. 
uh, and uh, maybe we can start with the Q&A, Teach, go ahead. Okay, all right, thank you very much, Tita Mona. So hello everyone, I'm Teacher Landa, and thank you for all the questions that you sent. No, I'll do my best to answer all of them as much as possible with a uh, given a lot, you know, with a lot of time that we have. Gusto ko lang po kayo ni inform that I went through our questions and what I did was I grouped the questions according to certain age ranges because they share common issues. You know, so that way we can address similar situations and parents can learn more diverse strategies uh, given the different situations that you've shared with us. Okay, so the first question is from Mommy Rosalie. Ang, ang question niya po is, my son is diagnosed with ASD. He is two years old and five months na po siya. Nakakapagsalita na po siya ng numbers, ng 1 to 10, and letters at na-identify niya po ito. What strategies po ang pwede kong ituro kasunod po nito? So it's very good that your son already knows these concepts at this age. My recommendation, however, aside from moving to the next steps in a usual curriculum, would be to focus on prerequisite concepts. Um, in my experience, po, no, um, we usually encounter young kids who are great at reciting uh, the alphabet, no, ABCs, perfect nila, or yung one, two, threes, pero pagka, in assess natin sila, kulang sila dun sa foundational concepts. So in special education, we really look and address at the learning gaps of a child para mas makita natin at ma-target natin yung comprehension skills nila and not just focus on rote learning or yung memorization because of repetition. Um, tulad halimbawa, may mga bata na kaya nilang i-identify yung letters or yung alphabet when it's posted on the wall. Pero when you randomly pick letters, hindi na nila alam. So nakikita natin doon na nagiging rote lang yung learning nila. So again, as I mentioned earlier, we should focus on prerequisite concepts. So ano ba yung mga prerequisite concepts natin? Kasama dyan yung matching, sorting, and of course, identifying different concepts. For example, very basic parts of the face, parts of the body. Um, we also want them to learn names of common objects, identify colors and shapes, action words or verbs. We want them to identify different gender, sizes, lengths, distances, positions like on, under, beside textures, no, the different days of the week, the different months of the year, also different types of weather, quantity, and directionality, left or right. So these are prerequisites, prerequisite concepts that um, become the foundation of, uh, of, you know, the next academic skills. So Balik po tayo dun sa inyong anak, no, once na master niya na itong mga prerequisite concepts na to, then we can teach them about, uh, teach him about identifying letters of his name to make it functional, uh, maybe matching upper and lower case letters, if that's something that hasn't been introduced when he was learning the letters, sequencing the letters, um, and then identifying letter sounds, no, so for numbers naman, pwede natin i-introduce yung sinasabing one-to-one -one correspondence. Dapat maintindihan ng bata. Pag sinabi, sinabi natin one-to-one -one correspondence, an example there is meron tayong, for example, three containers in front. Each container should only have one item uh, at a time. We also want to teach them to identify significant numbers in significant information in their lives. No? Um, their birthdays, their address, their telephone numbers, um, their age, and uh, the, you know, um, and then more than that, doon na po papasok yung pag-quantify ng numbers. So it's not enough that they know rote counting ng 1, 2, 3, until 10. Now we introduce yung pag-quantify naman ng numbers. So ang pag sinabi natin pag-quantify, dyan na papasok yung ilang objects ba? ang nagpo-correspond sa isang uh, number. So for example, if may five sa flashcard, dapat makapagbigay din siya ng 
five sticks or five marbles, depending on what you're going to use for that particular activity. In most uh, situations, in most uh, instances, these concepts can be taught simultaneously. Pero of course, it will be dependent then dun sa level ng bata kung kaya niya bang sabay-sabay matutunan ang prerequisite concepts tapos at the same time yung next steps na after niyang makapag-identify ng letters and numbers. Okay, so number two, uh, let's go to Daddy Georgie's question. Ang question niya po, ask ko lang po, my son is three and a half years old, six months ABA, when po kaya siya pwedeng mag-start ng SPED or therapy and school play muna? Or I think he means play school, no? Pre-verbal po siya but not conversant. Super bihira niyang call si mommy, mga five times pa lang. Kulang na lang talaga makipag-usap siya dahil nakakaintindi naman siya. Di lang niya masabi or more on gestures kung ano yung gusto niyang gawin. So I believe teacher Susie, our panelists, our SLP panelists yesterday addressed language concerns and the importance of communicative intent. So I'll focus more on the first part of the question. Pagdating po dun sa tanong kung kailan siya pwedeng magsimula ng SPED program, nakadepende po yan sa readiness ng inyong anak. No? So meron po mga areas, uh, meron po mga SPED schools who can take in students as young as three years old or even younger. But again, it really depends on the readiness of the child. So ordinarily, the usual course of action is therapy muna ang nire-recommend para sa bata para ma-address yung mga behavior issues. So usually, OT muna po ang unang nagiging intervention ng bata. Then, if the child is ready for a small group program, they are now recommended for a SPED class. No? So there are cases na the child is part of a SPED program and then therapy at the same time. In most cases, that works well. Pero makikita rin naman po habang, um, especially during assessment no, or evaluation, makikita rin po talaga kung magiging handa na ba yung bata for a small group program. Play schools are often recommended later on na po, no, pagka mas, um, mas, mas steady na yung behaviors ng bata para mas maka-benefit siya from the play school environment. Ang nangyayari po kasi, halimbawa, if the child is not yet fully ready for a small group program, mas nagkakaroon ng mga behavior issues, lumalabas yung mga behavior issues, so nagiging counterproductive to be in a play school setting. So in, it's really case-to-case -case basis po. No? So it would really be best to go to your developmental pediatrician to and allow the DevFed to guide you in terms of the best intervention for your child. Um, tandaan lang po natin that sometimes when there are too many programs um, given to the child all at the same time, tapos hindi cohesive yung ating plano, iba yung um, nagiging goals ng bawat intervention, it becomes counterproductive, hindi nakakatulong din sa bata. So importante lang po na everybody is on the same page so that it will really benefit. Okay, now let's go to two questions. I group two of these two questions together kasi parang halos pareho naman sila ng uh, situation po, no? So number three question, Daddy Raymond. Yung anak ko po is five years old na. May ASD po siya. Ang problema po is wala siyang focus. Paano po ba yun? Pag-aaralin na po kasi namin siya, saka mahilig siya tumawa mag-isa. Si Mommy Nicole naman, ang sabi niya, I have a five-year-old son. Sabi po ng school niya, meron po siyang behavioral problem. Di po namin alam kung paano siya i-handle. Okay, so doon po sa second question yung kay Mommy Nicole ng may behavioral problem, hindi po masyadong specific kung ano yung um, talagang nagiging behavior issues ng kanyang anak. So I'll try to be as general as possible po no? in answering this question. In general, children have a hard time paying attention. Lalo na po ngayon, madaming distractions um, in, you know, in our environment. For children with autism, this becomes a bigger 
challenge. No? So some of them have a hard time talaga focusing on things that are not interesting to them. But they can keep attention on something na talagang gustong gusto nila. So for example, if you ask them to do something, they will not mind you, they will not pay attention. Storytelling, they will not pay attention. But when they do that, when they want to watch um, a show or they want to do something that's really um, an interest for them, they can pay attention for, for hours. No? So, um, pagka nahihirapan po ang bata mag-pay attention, it can lead to problem behaviors. For example, kung yung bata um, hindi niya ma-follow yung instructions na binibigay sa kanya, Tapos the parents will keep calling her attention and the parents get frustrated and the parents get angry kasi hindi nakikinig yung bata, the child naman will get upset kasi the parents are already upset. So when that happens, it results to tantrums also for the case of the child. So nakiking konektado po na minsan pagkulang yung attention ng bata or hindi pa develop yung kanyang attention skills, it can eventually lead to problem behaviors. So for our kids with ASD, they can learn to pay attention with practice as in any skill. But we have to help them build attention skills. So one of the things that we really use is play. Play activities can really help a child develop, um, develop attention skills. So you can start with doing activities that are interesting for your child. So for example, mahilig siyang maglaro ng bola. You can do um, uh, throw and catch activity, take turns, um, and then pahaba ng pahaba yung orders that you do this activity. You should also uh, look for or provide activities that have a very definite end goal. So for example, gagawa kayo ng bracelet. Maybe sa umpisa, dalawang beads lang yung ilalagay ninyo. Sa umpisa, si mommy nyo na maglalagay. Sa susunod, si, um, si uh, child naman, si anak naman yung maglalagay ng bead. And then that completes the activity. The next time you decide to do it, maybe you can add more beads. And then, um, mas hahaba na yung pagkain niya ng attention doon sa activity na ginagawa ninyo. Another example would be, for example, a puzzle activity where si mommy muna yung magbubuo ng puzzle except for one last piece and then si baby naman yung maglalagay ng last puzzle piece. Maybe the next time you do it, two puzzle pieces na yung ilalagay ng ating anak um, until such time na kaya niya nang kumpletuhin yung puzzle piece, uh, yung puzzle, no? uh, magbubuo na niya on his, on his own. So it's very important lang po na gradual yung ating binibigay na um, increase in demand for attention for the child. So when we do activities like this, it's very important that we select um, an area that's conducive for learning. So dapat walang distractions, nakapatay ang TV, nakapatay ang radio. Um, dapat as much as possible walang computer doon or wala yung telepono so that the child can really focus and pay attention to the task at hand. And then um, also as the parent, limit the number of words that we use pagka nabibigay tayo ng instruction and then assist as necessary kung nakikita natin na medyo may difficulty na yung bata. Meron po kaming tinatawag na hand over hand assistance na hinahawakan or ginaguide din namin yung kamay ng bata to, to complete a task, that way you can also get their attention to do or to focus on the task. No? So, um, we also model the correct behavior when we complete an activity. So, it's important to establish routines. No? Um, routines are very important for our kids with ASD because it helps give them structure and it helps also develop their attention skills. No? So, ulitin ko po, gradual increase ang ating pag-address, no? ang ating, uh, para ma-address natin yung kanilang pangangailangan pagdating sa uh, attention skills. So, gradual increase in the length of the activity or in the frequency of the task. Hindi po natin expect na after one, one try by the next day, kaya na nang kaya na niyang gawin lahat ng buong activity. 
So let's not expect um, improvements overnight. So always one step at a time, no? um, gradual, gradual increase. Okay, so now let's go to our fifth question from Mommy Evelyn. Um, sabi ni Mommy Evelyn, I have a five-year-old son with ASD. Nag-stop lang po siya ng therapy dahil po sa pangyayari ngayon. Gusto ko po sana siyang turuan na magbasa. San po kaya ako pwedeng mag-start? Okay. Um, somehow connected po to dun sa ating first question earlier. Um, and tulad po nang na-share ko, um, once the child has mastered prerequisite concepts, pwede na tayong mag-proceed sa pagturo ng reading skills. No? So, dyan papasok yung letter identification, matching upper and lowercase letters, sequencing letters, identifying letter sounds, uh, papasok na din yung pag-identify ng initial, final, and medial sounds. Usually, we focus on short vowels muna. Um, and then blending letter sounds for CBC words. No? So ganyan po yung usual uh, process natin to teach uh, reading. In another approach, for example, in the Montessori approach, letter sounds are taught first before the letter names. No? So it will really depend on um, what approach you would like to use for your child. Sa SPED, meron po kaming tinatawag na IEP or Individualized Education Plan na ginagamit namin sa bawat bata. Ito yung um, plan for the whole school year tapos ini-implement ito ng mga teachers. No? Dito na, ito ang magiging basis ng lesson plan ng teachers. Dito po nakapasok yung task analysis ng ating mga objectives para sa mga bata. Um, lahat po ito depende dun sa current academic level of your son. So, it's Dahil po limited yung ating information right now, no, hindi ko po talaga matukoy kung nasa ang, nasa ang step na po yung inyong anak pagdating sa kanyang reading or pre-reading skills. So it would be good po, nabanggit ninyo may therapy ang inyong anak, it would be good to get in touch po with your um, therapist to find out, you contact them and find out ano po ba yung performance level ng inyong anak ngayon and then request for guidance for the next steps. Um, kasi sila yung makakapagsabi dahil mas alam nila kung ano yung current level of your son. Okay? Um, yun po. Okay, next uh, question. Ito, tatlong question po. Halos um, magkakasing edad yung kanilang anak and meron silang similar situation. No? So, number six question si Mommy Diane. Sabi ng doktor niya, not advisable yung anak kong 6 years old na may mild autism and OT and speech therapy na mag-spend school. So we enrolled him sa regular school during kinder. Ang problem next school year, grade 1, baka hindi siya maintindihan ng teacher or baka mag-grade siya ng mababa kasi wala siyang focus that much unless pagkasagaan, mabigyan ng instructions. Paano po ba ang suggestion sa mga teachers sa regular school? Si Mami Sheila naman, my son Bonbon bon is 6 years old. Okay po yung academic learning niya, pero yung behavior niya minsan mahirap kontrolin. He has autism, hyperlexia. Ano po ang um, talaga ang gagawin para sa kanya? Pinagbawalan po ng gadget at TV. Tama po ba yun? And then si Mami Rhea, Ask ko po kung hindi po ba mahirap sa isang bata na i-enroll po siya sa kinder school habang nagte-therapy. My son is 6 years old na po. Okay, so when considering a mainstream or an inclusive school for your child, napaka-importante po that we look and we um, busisiin natin no, yung apat na aspeto nito. Number one, yung approach ng school. Ito po ba isang traditional or progressive school? Number two, um, kasama po dito no, sa school's approach, yung tinatawag natin uh, curriculum, no, yung, ano po ba yung itinuturo ng eskwela, at yung pedagogy, kung ano yung kanilang uh, theory, yung school of thought nila, at saka yung paraan ng pagturo. Kailangan din po natin tingnan, pangalawa, yung capability and training ng mga teachers. Pangatlo, yung teacher-student ratio. 
and pang-apat, yung school climbing. No? So, meron pong mga estudyante na nag-thrive or nagsasaksib pag nasa isang traditional school sila. Meron namang iba na nagsasaksib in a progressive school. So, importante po na kilala natin yung ating anak kung saan siya mas magiging successful. Ngayon, um, pagdating ko sa teachers, pag ang teachers po ay trained to manage students with special needs or nabibigyan sila ng support ng school to handle students with special needs in a regular classroom, equip po sila. Alam po nila yung mga strategies or accommodations na kailangan gawin para matulungan ang ating mga um, children with special needs or children with autism in the classroom. So, dapat po alam nila yung mga behavior modification techniques at saka environmental modification techniques para mas magabayan yung, yung ating mga estudyante ng tama. In the general perspective po, no, um, kailangan po talaga alam din natin yung climate ng school. Are they the kind of school that's accepting of students with special needs, ano po yung kanilang inclination. Kasi kung open po talaga sila at they are very inclusive, then they will work hand in hand with you to come up with um, a better plan, you know, an educational program that will benefit your child. Ngayon pagdating naman po sa gadgets, no, generally po kaming mga educators, we, we really recommend moderated use of gadgets. Um, ang key term po dito is yung moderated. No? So, gadgets and TV per se are not bad. No? So, ang nagiging problema lang po pagka masyadong mahaba na yung paggamit or yung prolonged use. So, we have to remember that technology is something that we can use. It's a tool that we can use for our advantage. Lalo na po nga yung panahon ng ECQ. No? We, we realize that uh, we realize that Technology is very important. But we have to remember that it's just one of many tools. So, kailangan po balance eh, na meron tayong gagamitin um, na iba't ibang paraan para maturuan din yung bata. So, usually I would recommend po that I would recommend that technology is used as a means to introduce a concept or gagamitin mo siya as a visual aid. Pero after that, you will try to look for other activities or do other activities that can support support it. No? So, wag po tayo mag-rely on technology for a whole day, for example, na iwanan natin yung, yung ating anak just in front of the TV or laptop or a gadget. No? So, doon po tayo nagkakaroon ng issues or ng problema. For kids with hyperlexia, generally po cautious talaga tayo magbigay ng gadget sa kanila kasi they become very fascinated. No? Um, kasama po sa condition nila, de, to begin with, talagang gustong-gusto na nila yung letters and numbers. So when we expose them to gadgets, tapos yun din po yung nagiging focus, mas lalo silang nagiging fascinated, it becomes counterproductive na talaga. So it would be better po pag the kids with hyperlexia, it would be better to help the child focus on other areas that they can improve in. For example, um, understanding verbal language, it's important to communicate with them so that, um, so that they can understand how, what, what you say, verbal language natin, and of course developing social skills. No? So, yun po ang kailangan natin tandaan pagdating sa mga kids with hyperlexia. Now, pagdating po doon sa question about nagiging problema po ba or nagiging mahira po ba for a child to be in a therapy program and attending school at the same time, generally po, it's helpful. So, nakakatulong po pag yung bata ay naka-enroll sa isang SPED program at the same time may therapy program po siya. Kasi, Ibig sabihin na bibigyan ng additional support ng bata. Ang nakikita ko lang po na magiging issue or magiging problema sa ganyang arrangement is kung hindi pareho um, yung approach na binibigay ng teacher at ng therapist. So um, tulad po nung nabanggit ko kanina, no, if there's no cohesive plan kung iba yung goals na sineset ng, ng 
teacher, tapos iba din yung goal na sineset ng therapist, tapos magkaiba sila or inconsistent yung kanilang approach, it will be counterproductive and it, it, it will not help the child. No? So, kaya importante po yung role ng family dito, importante po yung role ng parents na magsiset tayo ng common goal for everyone para um, the strategies that we think of and that we will use will really be beneficial for the child. Okay. Now let's go to Mommy Marites, no? our ninth question. My child is moving to grade one this coming school year. Because of what's happening now during the lockdown, his speech and OT therapy stopped. I'm afraid that he will regress. Can you help me or give me instructions or strategies of what to do at home? Okay. <clears throat> My primary recommendation po dito, given na merong existing therapy services ang inyong anak, would be get in touch with this therapist and request for a home program. This is the easiest way po kasi kilala na nila yung inyong anak. So masasabi na nila kung ano yung level of performance niya at ano yung susunod na pwede yung support or susunod na pwede yung introduce It's actually my hope that centers and schools would provide this option for their students, especially now na na-extend pa po yung ating ECQ. No? So another step that you can do is to review your child's uh, therapy journal. So usually po ang mga therapists natin, meron silang um, notebook kung saan nila nilalagay ang mga activities ng kanilang uh, ng mga estudyante. No? Tapos may observations doon kung na-achieve ba yung, um, yung goal nila for that session. It would be good to go back lang to his activities, yung mga medyo na master na niya, tsaka yung mga medyo more recent na inintroduce sa kanya, just to keep the skills um, fresh. No? Now, habang nag-aantay po tayo, no? Alimbawa, nakontak niya na po at nag-aantay na lang tayo ng home program. While you're waiting for a home program, what I would highly recommend is for you to establish a routine for your child. A new schedule. No? So, kung hindi na po mag-work yung dating routine, kasi nga may major disruption sa ating mga activities, then come up with a new routine for your child. So this is a routine that will cover from him waking up until the time he sleeps. So you can provide activities that he can do at home. Um, kung meron po kayo, for example, na garden, pwede siyang mag-water ng plants, o kaya pwede siyang tumulong sa pag-clean up na after the pets o pagpapakain ng pets or gumawa ng household chores, no? or other leisure activities. You can put that all in a routine. This is, the great, this is a great opportunity to maximize the time to focus on improving independent skills at home. So you don't even have to think of activities. Baka iniisip nyo, kailangan po ng ganitong material or not. Hindi po. No? So the activities of daily living, from feeding to bathing to dressing to grooming, to prepping meals, to housekeeping, to leisure. Andiyan na po yan lahat sa bahay. Ang kailangan na lang po is gawan natin ng konting structure. No? Yung mga questions ko po dyan usually at, at seven years old or eight years old or grade one, is your child able to wash his own plate or utensils man lang after eating? Can he wash his underwear? Can he fix his bed, fix his clothes, fix his toys? Um... He can help out with preparing your meals. No po? Um, pag-peel ng mga ingredients, pag-measure ng ingredients, kung kasama yan, pag-mix, and all that. So, usually when we recommend this to parents, ang usual na sasabihin ng ating mga parents at least, magbagal kasi, teach him. Ako na lang gagawa para mas mabilis kasi minsan, um, hindi niya nagagawa ng tama. So, dahil kung meron tayong luxury of time ngayon, dahil nasa bahay tayo, it's the perfect opportunity to, to really focus on these independent and functional skills for our kids. No? So, they, um, ang lagi ko lang pong pinapaalala, when we teach them these activities of daily living, for example, housekeeping skills, hindi naman po yung purpose nun is para lang matuto siyang magbuno or para lang matuto siyang magwalis. Madami pong kaakibat na natututunan. No? Pag, natut pag tinuruan niyo po siyang magugas ng pinggan, there's attention to how much soap 
is placed on his hand or on the sponge to clean the plate, paano mo malalaman na thorough na yung paglinis ng plato? So these are additional skills that they can learn from doing housekeeping tasks at home. So hopefully when you keep them involved like that, then um, we wouldn't have to worry about them regressing until such time that classes or therapy can resume. Okay, um, number 10 from Mommy Jing. Advisable po ba ang homeschooling at ano po ang case na makakabuti ito? Okay, um, I've heard great things of uh, great things about homeschooling. I, I even know of families uh, of children with special needs who homeschool. Uh, ang, ang feedback nila is great yung outcome, so there's more bonding uh, for the family. They know the child better. Ang importanteng bagay lang po that we should consider when we look at homeschooling is yung family dynamics natin. Kasi po kailangan meron po talagang magiging primary teacher for the child who will really guide the child and then yung support ng ating household para dun sa gagawin nating program for the child. Um, if it's a home program uh, for a child with special needs na ang focus natin is yung pamilya yung mag-guide sa kanya, I suggest po that you work with a professional first, na, na somebody who can guide you in developing the program, identifying goals for your child. It can be a sped teacher. It can also be um, an occupational therapist who can assess your child's level of performance and then help with setting goals you know, uh, that the whole family can help achieve. If you're looking naman po at an academic program that you would like to provide um, to a homeschool uh, program, then I would also recommend that you work with a homeschool program provider para at least mas better guided po, no? Um, and then you can, you don't have to reinvent the, the wheel na mag, mag-iisip ka pa kung ano yung kailangan mo. Okay, so... Now we go to Mommy Clarissa. Um, so 11 and 12, number uh, questions po is, Mommy Clarissa, my 14-year-old po ako, magaling magbasa pero walang comprehension. Sa math po, pwedeng direct sumagot, pero pag may process na like division or two-step na, hirap na siya. Dati English speaking siya, pero tinuruan namin ng dialect namin. Nahahalata na speech delayed siya. Si Mami Monet naman po, okay ang grades ng anak ko, basta English yung subject. Pero lagpak, basta Tagalog. Siya lang ang ma-English sa bahay. Matagalog naman kami. Okay. Comprehension and critical thinking are higher order thinking skills. And kadalasan, mahirap po ito or medyo may difficulty ang ibang mga children with autism natin because they have problems with abstract concepts. No? May struggle din sila sa pag-express uh, ng mga sagot pagdating sa comprehension questions. Kung iisipin po talaga natin yung sagot sa how or why questions need a lot more processing compared to what, when, where, or who. That usually nakikita natin na natin kagad din sa text na binabasa natin. No? Um, so, pagka medyo may konting processing involved, medyo difficult din po talaga yan for them. Ang um, suggestion po talaga dito is for teachers to give the student more time to answer, no? Or present questions in a different way, maybe in a more visual form. Or maybe ask the student to answer questions na ang, ang mga sagot nila is multiple the multiple choice um ang, ang ano nila ang multiple choice ang kanilang uh, test or ang ang kanilang pag uh, pag present ng ng answers we also recommend for teachers to allow students to demonstrate understanding in different ways so minsan po nahihirapan sila with verbal expression pero baka kaya nilang ipakita yung kanilang understanding of a concept through a drawing or through a collage or through a painting. So these are different ways that teachers can accommodate um, issues or concerns when it comes to comprehension and um, critical thinking. No? Sa pagdating naman po sa language, madami po talaga tayong mga um, anak 
with autism na nagpe-prefer ng English. Primarily po kasi ito yung medium of instruction sa ating mga schools and centers. So pag nag-introduce po tayo ng bagong language, um, no, Filipino or um, ating ibang um, Philippine languages, it's important lang po to be consistent para mas may expose sila dito at mas makakasanayan nila. Ang language po kasi pag uh, hindi natin laging ginagamit, talagang nakakaligtaan natin tapos nahihirapan na tayong intindihin or gamitin in terms of expression. So dito rin po papasok na very important for teachers to be um, to be mindful of what is functional for the child and the family. Uh, so for example po, uh, nung dating school director ako, I would remind the teachers to use the child's primary language at home para mas magkaroon ng consistency. So, unless the family, of course, wants the child to learn English. No? So, importante po as, um, as family, as a family, yung parents, talaga po makipag-coordinate with uh, the teachers and the teacher should be open kung ano po ba talaga yung makakatulong na language na i-develop din sa bahay. Next, um, we have our question from Mommy Mary Lou. My son is 14 years old now, diagnosed with autism. He is attending SPED school and OT and socialization. Pansin ko lang po na parang nabubura yung knowledge niya. What is the best thing na dapat gawin sa kanya? Okay, so when it comes to memory, ang ating individuals with autism po have specific difficulties with memory, pero at the same time, there are many of them who have memory strengths. No? So some of them have problems with executive function skills, so kasama po dyan yung tinatawag natin working memory. Pero meron ding iba sa kanila who have strengths pagdating naman sa visual memory and rote memory. So ang key po dito is to use it to our advantage. So ano po ba yung mga pwede nating techniques na gamitin para mas ma-improve natin yung kanilang memory, yung kanilang recall, and yung retention. No? Unang-una po dyan yung pag-form ng habits. Um, uh, habits through step-by-step -step approach or yung tinatawag natin incremental learning. Dito po kung mapasok yung pag-task analyze natin. Halimbawa, merong dapat mag-prepare yung anak natin for school. Madalas, bine-breakdown natin, ano ba yung mga kailangan mong ihanda para sa skwela? Ito muna ang ihanda mo, ito, ito. And the more you do it po uh, on a regular basis, um, magiging routine para sa bata, it becomes a tool for the child. So routines become tools for children with autism because then they have um, something to go back to, no? Kung para may isip nila, ano ba yung mga expectations sa akin? What's the first step, the next step, third step, and so on. So, um, paulit-ulit ko pong nababanggit yung routines, no? Because that's very valuable for our children with autism. Another, another technique or another strategy is to use visual cues. So, majority of our kids with autism understand concepts better when they are presented in a visual medium. Kung kilala niyo po si Dr. Temple Grandin, no? isa siya sa mga ating mga uh, kilalang experts on autism, uh, who also has autism herself, she calls it thinking in pictures. No? Na pagka nakikipag-usap ka daw sa isang uh, person with autism, ang unang talagang naiisip nila mga pictures to create the concept in their head. So, dito rin po, ito rin po ang basis ng structure through teaching principle ng teach approach ng North Carolina, University of North Carolina. So we use a lot of visuals. No? You can use bright colors, you can use color codes or pictures or videos or even written instructions to help the child um, retain important information. You can also do memory games. No? Um, 
for lalo na for young kids, it's very important that you make things fun, that you make things engaging for them to uh, learn a concept and to retain it. The more fun it is, the, the better it is for them to understand it and to keep using um, the skill also. You can also create stories no, that connect on a deeper level to the child. Um, tayo po kasi pagka meron tayong pinagdadaanan ng isang bagay, when we're connected to it, when we recall what we felt during that time, mas ingrained sa memory natin yan, mas naaalala natin yan. No? So you can use that also as a technique to help the child remember certain situations or certain um, instances. You can repeat the story over and over para magkaroon ng mas malaking meaning para sa kanila. Um, and then they, it will be easier for them to recall um, or to develop their memory skills. Another, another tactic po that you can use, especially now na may ECQ tayo, yung pag-document ng events with pictures. And then you can add captions. So ngayong ECQ, it would be good. Maybe you can come up with an ECQ journal for your child. No? So easy naman to snap pictures of activities that you do at home. Kung wala kayong printer, it can be like um, this. It can be posted on a Word document lang and then you can come up with captions for it. Ano yung natutunan mo when you did this? What did you like about this activity? Um, what did you learn about this activity? And it can help them, you know, it can help remind them later on, oh, nung time na yun, uh, ganito yung nangyari nung ECQ, nung nagkaroon ng lockdown. And um, then it's easier for them to record. No, so dito rin po pumapasok yung isa sa mga paborito kong konsepto sa special education, yung tinatawag natin generalization. Dito po minsan tayo nagkukulang pagdating sa intervention natin sa ating mga anak. Ano po ba yung generalization? Ito po yung pag-apply ng mga konsepto na natutukunan sa isang setting sa iba't ibang setting. So, um, for example, po, mayroon tayong mga case, halimbawa, magkakaroon ng team conference, no? the teacher will explain sa sabihin ng teacher yung bata, ganito mag-behave in this particular setting. Pero sa sabihin ng, ng therapist, ay hindi sa amin, ganito yung, yung behavior niya o ganito yung response niya, etc. No? So, ang nangyayari lang po, minsan hindi na-apply or hindi na nagiging consistent yung approach natin sa bata in the diverse settings that he is in. So, tendency, what he learns in a clinic setting, pag hindi din na-apply yun in the home setting or hindi din na-apply yun in a classroom setting, hindi niya maiintindihan na, ah, dapat pala ganito ako mag-behave um, regardless of where I am. No? So, for example, another, another example po, madami nga yung um, apps or madami yung software ngayon that helps with the verbalization of our children, no? So kung halimbawa meron kayong app na ginagamit, um, natuturuan siya kung paano mag-name mag ng mga objects. Pero after ng session ninyo, is hindi naman natin nagagamit yung words na yon sa labas ng ating session online, hindi din niya maiintindihan na ay useful pala yon Magagamit ko pala yon outside of that setting. So, generalization, yung pag-generalize ng skills, ng concepts, importante po para also magkaroon ng retention yung ating um, studyante uh, sa kanyang iba't ibang mga natututunan. Okay, I'm down to the last question. Si Mami Monet. No? For Mami Monet, ang problem ko po sa 15-year-old child with autism po, two years nang ayaw mag-school. Due to stress, kasi sa ingay ng mga classmates niya, Dahil daw di sila nakikinig sa teachers, hindi sila organized. So nag-homeschooling kami pero ayaw na din mag-homeschooling at nakatutok na lang sa computer and drawings niya. Nag-sleep siya ng late and wake up siya ng lunchtime. Ganun lang ang routine niya pero independent po siya. Like, nakakaligo siya mag-isa at kumakain siya mag-isa. Nautusan naman at natuturuan siya sa gawain bahay at magsangkap ng sariling coffee niya. Paano po kaya namin siya matuturuan ulit mag-schooling? At also, nagka-trauma siya, lumabas siya kasi tas naligaw siya 
uh, minsan, pero nakita namin siya sa isang familiar place sa kanya. Okay, um, dito po papasok yung regular re-evaluation with your developmental pediatrician is very important to assess your child's current level of functioning and then they will be able to give you the proper placement for your child. No? Dito rin po ulit pumapasok yung nabanggit po kanina na it's important to research the school's background um, and the school's approach para malaman niyo po kung best fit ba yung skwela niyo para sa inyong anak. Kasi iba't ibang school have different principles and different practices. No? So, kasi po pagka nagkamali tayo ng placement, yan, tulad po niyan, magkakaroon talaga ng issue, then it will be harder na to bring our kids back to school. No? Pagka meron lalo na, may mga daming issues on bullying, uh, may mga issues on um, yan, mga hindi po kakaintindihan between kids who are neurotypical and kids who have autism or other special needs. No? So, it's great um, Tutuwa po ako dahil independent yung inyong anak and madaming respects. Pero at this point po, siguro importante din po na tingnan natin kung ano yung interest niya. Um, lalo na 15 years old siya, baka kailangan na natin siyang i-involve sa pag-plan ng kanyang future, no, ng kanyang education. Ano ba yung gusto niya talagang matutunan na nakikita niya na pwede niyang gawin eventually as a livelihood no, na talagang doon siya mag-focus at doon siya mag-de-develop. So, importante lang po i-explain sa kanya no, na kailangan niyang mag-aral. Tapos, pag-usapan niyo po kung ano yung options na amenable sa kanya. And it would really be good if you can find a school that will cater to his interests and one that you can really work with hand-in-hand -hand, um, on goals that will benefit his future. Um, uh, because he's already at that stage na pwede na siya eventually train na siya, no, transition at transition planning na tayo kung ano na yung mga next steps para sa kanya. Dito rin po papasok yung community integration. It's a very important life skill. Um, yung school director po ako, one of the things I put in place was um, we focus on community living activities. Um, it's a two-way street. no We teach our students about the community but we also teach the community about our students. And it's a very important um, activity because then you really expose your child to what's out there. And matuturuan niyo siya ng behaviors na para sa community na, um, na mas uh, magpa-function siya ng, uh, and maging productive member siya of society. No? So kasama po yan sa isa sa mga ina-address din natin in special education. So there, I think I covered all of the questions. Um, and I hope may naibahagi po ako sa inyo. <laughs> no, no, I have a follow-up. Okay. Follow Your last question was about a teenager. Can you please um, describe a little bit po bakit po importante yung transition education? At anong edad po ba dapat tayo nag-uumpisa na na mag-isip ng transition plan? Okay. In uh, SPED literature, usually po as early as 10 to 14 years old, dapat tinitingnan na natin ano ba yung magiging plano para sa bata uh, for his future. No? Kasi um, kumbaga, kung sa ating mga neurotypical na anak, yan yung stage na malapit na silang mag-college. Sa ating mga kids with autism, the earlier we can start to see how we can prepare them for the future, the better. Kasi nga, minsan medyo nagkakaroon ng delays in their acquisition of skills and all that. No? So, very early on, kailangan nakikita na natin yung interest ng bata. Paano natin nakikita yung interest ng bata? We need to expose them to as many possible activities as um, na, out there. No? Um, hindi pwedeng kung ano yung sa tingin natin gusto nilang gawin, yun lang yung expose natin sa kanila. So, we really expose them. Oh, ma mahilig ba siya sa music? Mahilig ba siya to, sa clerical work? Mahilig ba siya with engaging with other people? We, we need to really look for the different um, different work environments, different settings that they can really thrive. And then we focus on that. Lalo na po ngayon, uh, malaki po yung talk on self-determination. We need, lalo na for our higher functioning adults no, with autism, we need to involve them. Um, 
ano ba yung gusto talaga nilang gawin. So, katulad lang din natin, no po, hindi tayo magsatrive if we don't enjoy what we're doing. So, it goes the same way for them. So, the earlier you start, the better. Yes. And so, teacher, it's not the experiences that we have with the ASP Autism Works Program where we try to find uh, uh, productive opportunities to work for our kids on the autism spectrum. One experience I get a lot kapag kausap ko yung mag-ulong lang is yung anak ko magaling sa academics, nakapag-graduate ng high school, nakapag-graduate ng college. Bakit hindi siya makahanap ng trabaho? Can you please share a little bit on the, our concerns kung bakit hindi lahat ng nakakagraduate ng high school at nakakagraduate ng college ay job ready? Okay. Well, um, we need to understand po no, na when a child or when um, well, an adult, na, when a young adult is placed in a work environment, hindi, hindi um, enough yung academic uh, skills lang yung natutunan niya. Diyan po pumapasok yung kanyang job readiness in terms of nandyan po ba yung kanyang um, attitudes um, pagdating sa pagkatrabaho. Sometimes, nahihirapan sila to get supervision. Nahihirapan sila to follow certain instructions. Yung punctuality, for example, of coming to work on time and focusing on the work. Meron po mga ganyang aspeto na kailangan tayong tingnan. So, hindi lang po yung knowledge yung importante. Kailangan po natin i-develop yung tinatawag na soft skills. no When in fact, yung soft skills na yan, yun yung mas importante because that will help them retain a job. For example, pagka naipasok siya sa isang uh, work environment, kung nahihirapan siya to get along with, with co-workers, um, he does not pay attention to the task or meron siyang ibang mga obsessions no? um, or meron siyang ibang fascinations that distract him from his work. Those are things that we really need to look into. So, um, dapat po balanse no? yung tinatawag nating uh, work attitudes, work skills, yung pinaka work behaviors na kailangan po ng bad. Uh, ng ating anak. No? I always say bata, but you know, we, we have a lot of young adults who we want to be able to prepare for, for work. And those are things that teachers and of course families should look into also because those are important for the world of work. I'd like to echo uh, Teacher Landa's point about the balance. Ang mga anak po natin, ay hindi magiging independent, ko tignan lang natin palagi ay academics. Kailangan po marunong sila makahirutin sa tao, dapat uh, meron silang value system, dapat dapat mabait sila. <laughs> Para <laughs> po, mahanapan <laughs> natin sila ng trabaho. Diba? So yun, yun po, I think very that's important. At habang bata pa, habang tinitignan nyo pa lang ay kinder at grade school, isipin nyo na po yun. Kasi it is a long term. Uh, hindi pwedeng pag high school pa lang, tsaka pa lang natin gagawa ng paraan. So ngayon pa lang na maliit yung mga bata. Dapat we are connected enough with our children to make that week. So, Mr. Landa, we, are, we have four minutes to go to our, uh, to our hour. Would you like to share a message for our parents? Um, okay, thank you very much, Natita Mona, for this opportunity. I'm, I'm so happy to be here to at least share whatever um, knowledge I have no, for getting sa special education. Siguro yung parting words ko lang po, no, I'd like to share a reminder for everyone based on a simple but very important meme that's going around on social media. It says, um, you're not stuck at home, you're safe at home. It's very simple, but it holds a lot of meaning for me, no? Kasi yung bottom line po dito is yung perspective. Um, and when you change your perspective, many things around you, you can react to, you know, more proactively. So, ito yung tinuturo sa atin ng COVID-19 right now, yung shifting of our paradigm. Yun yung nakikita ko ngayon, yung ating pagbago sa ating way of thinking. Kung dati, iniisip natin na para matuto, 
dapat nasa nasa school at para magtrabaho nasa opisina dapat. Ngayon pinapakita sa atin ng COVID-19, pwede pa lang sa bahay gawin ito. And um, makikita po natin na there's so much that we can do at home and there's so much that we can learn at home. And gusto ko lang po siguro ng emphasize sa parents na the parents are the first teachers of children and the home is the first school of our children. So we need to empower ourselves na kaya natin. No? Medyo mahirap lang po because we're we're really facing an unprecedented um, event no walang prepared sa atin dito pero if we shift our mindset and we say na ay hindi kakayanin natin to there's so much that we can accomplish also but at the same time no since this is uh, unprecedented let's also be kind to ourselves na hindi naman natin ma-accomplish lahat um, so let's be kinder to ourselves let's, let's be kinder to others let's be more patient extra extra patient to our kids with autism because kung tayo medyo na we're so anxious about you know um, everything that's changing around us and the new normal that we need to adjust to imagine how much more for them no so we need to be there to to help them you know ease them into this new way of doing things um, and I, everything will work out you know everything will work out so you just have to have faith Let's keep the faith and just keep safe and stay at home <laughs> so that we will all be protected eventually. Okay. 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 As, uh, as I have been telling uh, as a share in all this week, now we have to share the calm. Nakahawa ang kalma because our kids feel our fear, our kids feel our our stress. So dapat we should share positive energy with our kids. Maraming salamat, Teacher Lada, for sharing your time with us. I know that oh, this welcome. valuable time that you could have spent with, uh, with Levi. But I'd also like to um, Board in everyone who benefited from this session. Na tuli tuli lang po ito. Uh, we are going to have another session tomorrow at three thirty. Tomorrow we uh, we have an occupational therapist joining us. Teacher Anna Tan Pascual is going to be joining. So you questions you po about occupational therapy. Uh, pahilagay na lang po sa comment section. And all of the comments which we got today na hindi nasaglot. We're all also going to endorse them to our next professional. So, yun po. Um, I hope you are all having all a good day. Teacher Lada, magkapi tayo. Tapos na to. <laughs> and I see, I, I see you all again tomorrow or this, the next ASP Ask the Experts. Salamat mo. Bye-bye.